Hello again. I wanted to have a look at this today. This is a car charger that I got from Poundland. So, um, so it's one of those ones that you plug into a lighter socket. So it's converting 12 volts to 5 volts. So it says compatible with all smartphones. And on the back, the spec is input 12 to 24 volts, output 5 volts, 1 amp. So. Let's have a look. So it's a little black plastic case. And there's nothing to it apart from this bit that you plug into the charger socket. So let's put 12 volts in. I'm actually going to put 13, 13 and a half volts in, which is a fair simulation of a car st uh, battery system. So 13 and a half volts we got there. So that will be the positive on the end there, and the negative for the barrel on the side. So we have a, a red lead there. And I've got a couple of different I've got a couple of different uh, ones of these charge doctors as they're called on eBay. So that's reading five point about 5.2 volts. Let's have a look at the, the more sophisticated one here. I th actually, this has a very dark um, plastic bezel which I had to cut off because I could hardly see the display. But let's see now. So that's reading 5.19 volts. And uh, one good thing about this this particular model as it gives you readings on the D plus and D minus pins which uh, as I said in a in a previous video often the D plus and the D minus pins are used to uh, signal to the mobile phone how much current it can draw so here the D plus and D minus is about 0.9 volts which isn't any particular recognized value so I think I'll have to plug in the um, the multimeter to see what's going on there so first of all I could plug in uh, I've got this very simple load here it's just a couple of resistors I'll switch that to one amp and I'll see if this can actually supply one amp Check that's one amp, yeah. So yeah, so that's reading 0.93 amps. So that's okay, isn't it? So it's actually it is able to provide approximately the amount of current that they specified, which is fine. Completeness. I'm going to put this other one in as well. Ah, oh, that's actually gone off now. I think maybe it overloaded and switched itself off. Let's plug it in here. So we've got point around point nine amps, and with that one amp load, it's floating around five volts. So, so there isn't any significant drop in in voltage there.
So I'll plug in this little jig that I sometimes use. Oh, it's gone off again. That's interesting, isn't it? So it does... it, it trips out. So yeah, that's back on again now. So I'll use this little jig to measure the voltages on the D plus and D minus. So if I uh, put this on the black, which is ground, and then we'll look at the D plus and D minus pins. That says 0.1 volts, about 0.1 volts. So I think these these wires might actually be floating, so we can check that. Let's put it on the continuity. Yeah, so the D plus and the D minus are actually interconnected in the Chinese style. So um, this one thing I can say for sure is that this particular car charger won't won't work very well with Apple products, or at least the Apple products will charge very slowly um, because a, an Apple device needs particular voltages to to be displayed on the D plus and D minus pins, and um, if it just sees floating pins, it will draw half an amp, so you'll end up with a much longer charging time. Okay, so we've got some idea of what might be in here. I'll uh, crack it open now and we'll have a look inside. Okay, so that wasn't too difficult to get open. So what have we got inside? So there's, that looks like a choke there. And there's a couple of capacitors, small electrolytics, so 100 microfarads, 220 microfarads, and if we flip it over, so underneath we've got a, a diode here, so I guess that's probably to stop it being connected reverse polarity and destroying it. So there's a diode and then there's a chip, looks like there's a, there are a couple of few tiny surface mount capacitors there as well. So let's have a look what this chip is. So th that chip actually says A2105 on it. And the A2105, I found the data sheet, is a switching regulator. So this is being used as a, uh, as a buck converter. So it has a maximum input of 36 volts and here is obviously switching down to 5 and um, it has quite a lot of safety features so it can sense short circuit uh, over voltage over temperature and so on so I guess that was what was happening just now it was detecting some kind of unusual condition and then it would shut down to protect itself so uh, so that's quite a nice little design for, um, for only a pound, really. Oh, I've just noticed the surface mount LED. There's an LED here, which is obviously shining through a little plastic light pipe here in order to get the light out the front. In terms of the, in terms of how the D plus D minus pins are uh, driven, you can see that the 
two center pins of the USB are joined together by a track so that's it so they're D, D plus D minus looped together uh, which is the DCP specification so um, that might lead some devices to try and draw more than one amp because I think the DCP specification says you can draw one and a half amps and uh, I don't think this is designed to go up to one and a half amps so that's quite a nice little device for a pound um, probably not the best for charging your iPhones and iPads and so on but probably a range of generic smartphones will uh, will perfectly well charge from this I think just for fun I thought we'd overload it a little bit so that's this is running at one amp at the moment so uh, so you can see 5 volts at 0.9 amps but I can switch this on to 2 amps now sorry the connections are a bit shaky here if I put it on 2 amps right so it's now it's providing it's dropped the voltage right down to three and a half volts and it's drawing 1.2 amps so a lot of devices will refuse to charge at that point because the voltage is too low um, but I mean it's not caught fire and uh, that's a lot of current so the resistors are getting quite hot now That seems like quite a safe little device.